Hello and good morning. Hey, good morning, Arrow. It's John Cafiero. John, what a creative man you are. I'm so excited to talk with you because I, I got to know what your hook is in the way that everything you touch has me singing right along with you. I, I, I don't get how you do this all the time. Oh, thank you. That's an amazing compliment. I really appreciate it. I'm so happy to hear that. Well, I, Glad I, you dig my stuff. I, I've sat here all morning listening to the land of Hatchie Malachi, and the thing is, I keep getting these flashbacks of when I used to buy um, all of these KTEL albums. I go, my God, this is exactly what I had as a kid, songs that I could <laughs> sing with. That is so cool. Yeah, I mean, the land of Hatchie Malachi, it actually is this obscure children's song from the 1950s, and it's been <laughs> out of print for decades. It was originally performed by Rosemary Clooney, and I just thought it was a really surreal and bizarre song that I felt really tied and would fit in perfectly with this Sweetie Candy Vigilante comic book that I'm producing, yeah. and specifically covered it with a highly unique approach for the series. I'm so glad that you're putting music with this, because my last two books that I published came with music as well, and I thought, I, I just want to do a soundtrack because I'm feeling this. Is it the same thing for you that when you are putting together a story, it's like, man, there's music in my head, I gotta get it out. Absolutely, uh, without a doubt. In fact, when I first heard the original version of The Land of Hatchie Malachi, my wife Suzanne, who created and writes Sweetie, and I um, were talking, and I, I said, are you listening to this? And I was hearing the song on this freeform radio show that had happened to play it, and I said, this would be perfect for Sweetie, and I immediately just pictured doing this unique cover of it that would be sort of uh, what you would hear if you were watching it as a film. To create it with that kind of a punk sound in the background, I mean, that sound is something that really resonates is what it does. And I remember sitting down with Johnny Rotten of the, of the Sex Pistols and he goes, it's, it's not punk, it's blues. How do you describe your sound? Well, um, I would really describe it as maybe power pop or, yeah. you know, punk pop. It's, it's really just what I'm feeling. I mean, one of my favorite bands, really my favorite band of all time as a kid, and even to this day is the Ramones. Yep. And I always yep. just kind of view everything as if it was, you know, the Ramones, but through my own filter. So it's really just kind of like my own version of the Ramones, which I, I think comes out as kind of like power pop or, you know, punk rock, punk pop. It's <laughs> it's really just derivative of my personality. It, you might even just call it like cartoon punk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Being a part of the Dr. Demento journey, I mean, my God, I mean, what, today, I mean, with the platforms that we have, but it's still not Dr. Demento. How do you find your place and space? You know, it's. I think people find you. I think it's yeah. really a matter yeah. of you just put out what you feel and what you believe in, and there are going to be people that are like-minded or just have similar tastes that are just going to be drawn to it and hopefully find it. And with, like you said, there's just so many platforms out there all over the world that it everything, it very easily just gets lost in the ether and... and hard to find. Mm -hmm. So I think you just have to put your stuff out there, really believe in it, and enjoy what you're doing, and maybe even do it for yourself more so than anything else, and then just hope that other people like it too. So when your wife is putting together the, the uh, animation and, 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 you know, and, the, and the comic book itself, what is that like for your creative process as well? Because I mean, you're coming from a musical side. She's coming from an imagination that has just got to be so vivid, because I do see the colors. Oh, absolutely, yeah. She's very imaginative and uh, really has created an incredible series and an incredi incredible storyline and stable of characters. And she writes it, and then from there I work with the, the different illustrators yeah. to get the book uh, illustrated and colored and packaged. And uh, it really is, I look at it like making a movie. It's really just like uh, taking a great script and then trying to make the best movie out of it that you can. And music comes hand in hand with that. One of the things that I've always uh, wanted to understand is that how do you know when to stop when you're doing a series? In other words, how do you know, okay, this is this book. Okay, stop. We're going we're gonna to create the series. It's going to go. Because, I mean, I would, I would do 5,000 books or pages uh, just to get one story out. Well, you know, most comic books actually are kind of capped at about 22 pages. Wow. The average comic book is about 22 pages of original content, and then the rest is just ads and, you know, other miscellaneous stuff. So for the very first issue of Sweetie, because it was the debut issue, we went about 10 pages longer than you normally do. And then issues two through six in volume one were 22 pages apiece. 
and we were thrilled that the reception for the first six issues in the first volume was so good and left people wanting more that we just kicked off a sequel series, which is now Sweetie Candy Vigilante Volume 2, issue number one, was just released last week. And the first six issues of Volume 1 were collected as a trade paperback that just came out at the end of January. Um, so, you know, you in comic books, you do have some confines to work within because there is sort of an expectation of roughly 22 pages for uh, your average issue. But you can go on with as many issues as it takes to tell your story. And we knew that this was going to be a multiple volume thing because the storyline is so rich and there's just constantly new things being revealed about the character and her world and the other characters that exist within it. And the first volume really just scratched the surface, but we were thrilled to death that people liked it to the extent that they did. And the fact that now that volume two is launched, there's been so many people that are saying, (laughs) I was so thrilled when I saw that more was coming out because I was kind of disappointed to see it end. Wow, see, it's fun to go to a comic book store and just listen to everybody's stories. And when they pick up a book that they haven't seen before, and all of a sudden, they begin you know, sharing their journeys as well. How did you get involved with comic books? Was it a kid thing? I mean, what, what was the journey? Yeah, I've always loved comic books ever since I was a kid. Yeah. And honestly, even when my wife and I first started dating, uh, we used to go to comic book stores and buy comics and then go back home and read them together. <laughs> so, you know, we both love comic books and uh, it, I think, was just fate that we'd wind up working on one together somewhere down the line and doing something completely original. And that is really refreshing with this because a lot of comic books today, there's very few original properties. Most of them are based on pre-existing properties, just like films. And that's cool because it's great to see something that you love um, in another medium, but it was a challenge to take something that was completely new, a new character and a new world and introduce it. And we were really thrilled with the reception that people took to it because that's not very common for new properties to survive among so many other big properties. And literally, our publisher, Dynamite, who from the very beginning I felt was the right home for this, and after talking to a number of different companies and then finally talking to uh, Nick Perucci of Dynamite, it was evident to me that they were the right home, and Nick was immediately like, we want this, and we ink the deal with them. And with Dynamite, we're an incredible company, but all these very well-established properties. I mean, they're the home of Red Sonja, Vampirella, Army of Darkness, based on the famous Sam Raimi movies, James Bond, 007, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, Game of Thrones. So there's so many incredible properties there, Barbarella, and to be among them is just uh, an absolute thrill for both Suzanne and I. For you guys to collaborate like that, is it is it because the way that I run my house is that is when I go into the studio, that's my studio time. I get to be Arrow, but when I get to come out, then I can be Mister Husband. When 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 do you guys get to? Do you, I mean, do you separate and then come back at lunch, or what do you guys do? No, you know, it's kind of like uh, you know, if I'm very much like a doctor, sort of on call, twenty four hours a day, <laughs> and my work day does not ever really end. I mean, there are little moments in between where I'll have downtime for just personal life or whatever, but things just happen all the time. And when you're creating or working on things, you know, for me, uh, quite a bit uh, of the middle of the night is sometimes when I like to work on stuff the most. Um, So yeah, there's really, it's kind of like our house is sort of like this, uh, weird studio yeah 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 now i have a show on iheart radio called creativity is the addiction do you find yourself in that position where it's like i've, I've got to keep creating i've got to feed it i've got to give it more absolutely yeah. yeah without a doubt i mean i'm always doing something and i always have a million different projects going on at once i mean literally right now i'm producing volume two of the sweetie candy vigilante comic book series i'm also in the process of producing dr demento covered and punk volume two wow. which is as you know from the first volume a huge undertaking and a really rich diverse project i'm working on uh, new osaka pop star material um, managing the misfits, the estate of Dee Dee Ramone. There's, there's always a lot of different things going on, all things that I really love and feel fortunate to be involved with. <laughs> well, I love what you do. I mean, you, you really do bring us the story in so many different ways. And, it, and it's like it, it doesn't catch us off guard. It catches us in a moment of, oh, my God, I found my escape. And it's coming from you and your wife. Oh, thanks. I'm really glad to hear that. And the way that the world is today with all of the chaos in the world and negativity, I mean, having an escape really is 
a valued treasure, in my opinion. Even with the song Melanda Hatchie Malachi, when I hear it, I mean, one of the reasons I wanted to do it is because I felt that it was sort of our version, Osaka Pop Store's version, is imagined as if coming from Sweetie's candy-coated glasses <laughs> point of view, but through her sort of unhinged mind. And when I listen to it sometimes, I think, boy, with the state of the world right now, it'd really be great for us all to have a land of Hachi Malachi to go escape to. Oh, my God. You just said two of my favorite words, except you said candy-coated uh, view. I, my, I I live by this mantra, candy-coated plastic bathroom mirror smile. And we all have yeah, that. That's great. And it's like, so for you to say that, I'm going, holy crap. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, well, I, I always... I enjoy your interviews, Arrow, because you're really, you've got a, a really imaginative mind yourself, and you're really thorough and um, into the things that you talk about, so it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Envision the viewer and the listener, because every time I come into the studio, it's like, okay, they're waiting, now I need to deliver. Do You I, you seem to be that type as well. Yeah, you know, I want to make sure that anything I do is fun and entertaining for anybody that's going to take the time to give it a listen, so I really do try to put my best foot forward in everything I do. And um, at the same time, I really am genuinely passionate about it, so I think the two together is just uh, its a combination that's worked really well for me, and I take pride in it. Wow. Where can people go to find out more about you, this entire project? And I'm sure that, you know, if you're going to be doing any visiting of any stores or comic book uh, conventions, I mean, you've got to be somewhere. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, well, for starters, for Osaka Pop Star's music and to check out our animated music videos and learn more about the band, Osaka Pop Star, just visit osakapopstar.com. It's just like the city in Japan, O-S-A-K-A-P-O-P-S-T-A-R.com. And to learn more about the Sweetie Candy Vigilante comic book series, visit our official website for the series, which is Sweetie, S-W-E-E-T-I-E, Candy Vigilante, dot com. And uh, you can order the records at OsakaPopStar.com. You could order the comics at SweetieCandyVigilante.com. You could check out the music on all the digital platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, you know, Amazon, pretty much all of them. And you can find Sweetie Candy Vigilante literally in your favorite comic book shop. So if you want to support your mom and pop shops, stop into your local comic book shop and ask for it. And um, if you want the convenience of having it delivered to your door, check out the website and order everything from us online because we've got rare variant covers, autographed copies, and uh, pretty much everything you could you could uh, look for in a sweet shop online. Wow. How long did it take you to let it roll off your tongue the way that you say sweetie candy vigilante? I mean, come on. That's like saying, you know, say it five times in a row and see if you can do it without tripping. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's an amazing title. As when my wife first mentioned it to me, I immediately thought, you know, this is definitely something that, uh, that I think has... Uh, legs and uh, could catch on because it's certainly entertaining me <laughs> please come back to the show anytime in the future the door is always going to be open for you john oh thank you arrow it's always a pleasure and i really appreciate all of your support and i'm so glad that you like what i do well you be brilliant today okay thank you you too arrow have a great one i'll speak with you next time